sports history this week. For the first time ever, the lights went out on the National Football League. But while they strike here, you will see former American college stars like Conrich Holloway play ball in the Canadian Football League. We will track the pennant races. They are now heating up. And we'll be going to Pittsburgh. No game, but fans are there all today on a special edition of NFL 82. Brought to you by the 1982 Volkswagens. Nothing else is a Volkswagen. By Old Spice Stick, the deodorant that works overtime. And by the U.S. Army. The Army, a great place to be all you can be. And hi again, everybody. We never thought it would happen either, but this is the first regular season Sunday in the history of the NFL without football. But NFL or no, Pete will still have some picks for us, and we will have football as we go a little farther north for kickoff. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson will be joining us in a welcome to Canadian football. But first, the NFL and the strike in week one. And it turns out, television once again is the big issue. Cleveland Browns owner Art Modell revealed that the three TV networks were continuing to pay the NFL their TV money for two weeks, even with no games. Players Chief Ed Garvey then ripped the networks for what he called funding the strike. <laughs> With slow motion, reverse angles, and instant replay, television has glamorized the controlled aggression that is professional football. Newspapers are filled with game analyses that read like reports from the battlefield, with all the attendant buzzwords. But too often, we look at players as invincible warriors, impervious to pain, rather than vulnerable human beings. Last week, the Jets lost all-pro defensive end Joe Kleckel for possibly the season in a 31-7 win over the Patriots. His sack exchange partner, Mark Gastineau, was deeply affected. It really upset me because, uh, like my mother and father said, they heard it on the TV right after it happened. They said one of the all-pro defensive ends was down, and their heart just, you know, almost stopped, and they said that, uh, you know, that could have been you. In addition to Klecko, these key players have been lost for the majority of the entire 82 season. The successful NFL player must learn to cope with the anxiety of getting injured. The players that worry about getting hurt, uh, it's been my experience that they either have, they're either not very effective and they get hurt because they're trying to hold back, or they, uh, they just give up the game. I'm afraid of an injury that will end my career. But I feel the only way to stay away from injury is to go out and play every play 100% and hope it doesn't happen to me. According to the Players Association, the average career life expectancy is 4.6 years. Every man is keenly aware that his value is directly related to the health of his body. Each play, each game, each year robs him of some of his talents. As far as injuries are concerned, football players appear to be a victim of their own fast-paced evolution. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, and when those forces collide, they're bound to get hurt. But the feeling of playing in front of all those fans on a Sunday afternoon or a Monday night is so powerful, they're all willing to pay the price, Len. Mike, we keep hearing money in these negotiations, the $1.6 billion, but how much is the injury factor in the short career? How big a part does that play in these negotiations now? A lot. For every Burt Jones who does a soap commercial, for every Earl Campbell or a Walt Garrison who puts a little pinch between their cheek and gum, there are a lot of others who face severe career adjustments once they retire or are away from the league, and all they're looking for is a little nest egg to serve as a springboard to launch them into the private sector. I hope to get it here at the table. Okay, thanks, Mike. Will today's missed games ever be made up, and what about future games that are missed? The NFL Competition Committee will decide the schedule once it is determined how many games are missed, but the NFL doesn't want to guarantee the games will ever be made up. Why let the players think they'll eventually get the paycheck that they are missing today? And it's not just the games being missed today, it's a Sunday lifestyle. What about all those tailgaters? What are they doing today? Well, in Pittsburgh, they are tailgating with some special guests. Let's go to Bob Costas, not in the booth, but outside of Three River Stadium. 
An empty Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. If the Steelers had been hosting the Giants today as scheduled, a lot of people would be outside in the parking lot right now tailgating. So 20,000 Pittsburgh residents decided, what the heck, we'll do it anyway. And the parking lot is jammed with revelers, including the terrible towel mascot. How do you feel about the strike, sir? Well, I feel simply terrible about it. You'll notice me and 20,000 friends are out here, a little sad face, but we're having a party and we love it. We I, notice, I notice that uh, you're working under some sort of handicap here. There seems to be one missing. Well, that was that one for the thumb stuff last year. A couple of the fans took it serious and ripped it up. All right, good to see you. Get out of here, sir. You know what I mean? Hey, some of the players are here. Terry Bradshaw stopped by to show his solidarity with the fans. Hey, it's good to see you, Terry. Good to see you. A little trouble on the hairline front. Okay, Terry, take care. Hope the strike is over soon. Two tickets, huh? Hey, nice to see you. You're selling a couple of tickets. What do you usually get scalping a couple of ducats outside Three Rivers before a big game? For you, Bob, $50. $50 is a special. <laughs> $50 a ticket. Well, I'll tell you what. I got a couple of passes here to next week's uh, Edmonton Eskimos game. What do you say? <laughs> it's a good trade. Hey, oh, no problem. Thanks a lot. Thank Take you. care. What's it all about? That's right, sir. Walk right in front of the camera. Take care. Have a good day. What's it all about? It's an everything but football party here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Everybody's having a good time. Let's go back to NFL 82 in New York. And we're all glad that Bob is gainfully employed this day. Good job. And so, life goes on without NFL football. We've got the pennant races in baseball. We've got football in Canada. And standing by live in San Diego, we have the owner of the Chargers, Gene Klein. All of that when we come back. Good thing I bought the Energizer. <laughs> of all leading battery brands, nothing outlasts the Energizer from EverReady. Nothing outsnaps it, nothing outadds, outwalks, outplays, outtapes, outshines, outlasts it. Nothing. The Energizer even outlasted Susie. The Energizer, Energize for life. Long life. Energize me. Comfort Glow took a great idea and made it better. This Comfort Glow kerosene heater has push button electric starting, a lift out fuel module, a new porous ceramic self cleaning wick, and a heat circulating fan. Comfort Glow kerosene heaters. A great idea made even better. From Atomaster, a unit of AMCA International. If you could only appreciate what you put your car through road grime, bad weather, Extremes in temperature. Give your car a break. Go to your Napa Auto Parts store or to participating garages and stations during Napa Fall Car Care Days and keep your car in shape for the months ahead. Because out on the streets, things can be pretty tough. For your domestic or import car, look for this sign of fall. Someday soon, you could very well have the best of everything. But you will have to begin somewhere. And the best place to begin is with the very best beer in the world. The best tasting beer wherever you go. When you think about it, why would you ever have anything else? Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. Knight Rider, the two-hour movie spectacular, crashes into your living room. I don't believe this. Don't miss Knight Rider, the movie, tonight at 8, 7, Central and Mountain. You know, it was supposed to be a doubleheader Sunday here on NBC, and the key game in the doubleheader, the second game, the undefeated Raiders at San Diego. Well, we still have a camera at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. It was supposed to be sold out. The weather conditions rainy out there. And instead, nobody in the stands, but we do have our Phil Stone of NBC and the owner of the San Diego Chargers, Gene Klein. Phil? Thank you very much, Len Berman. I guess Mother Nature has made her feelings known as to just where she stands on this National Football League player's strike. We never have rain in September in San Diego. However, as you have seen, we have it now. And that has forced Gene Klein and I indoors here at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. And Gene, I suppose the first question has to be, the topic of the networks paying the owners $1.6 million for these first two games that the players and the owners will be missing. What do you stand on that? Well, as you know, Phil, uh, Garvey has been threatening a strike for two years. He has certainly put us on notice that they were going to strike. 
But we went out and made whatever financial arrangements we had to make to make sure that we could do the season and go through the season, if necessary, without playing football. One of the things was the fact that the three networks would pay us for two weeks, whether or not we played those two weeks. Of course, we do have to return the money to the networks in future years. Additionally, we went out and got a $150 million line of credit uh, at well-known banks so that we can sit, if we have to, the entire season, and if necessary, start again in 1983. Gene, are the owners prepared to sit through the 82 season? We have no choice, Phil. We have no choice but to sit through unless the union comes off their demand that we put all player money into a fund, and that fund to be administered by Ed Garvey, thereby making Ed Garvey the financial czar of the National Football League. Neither he nor anyone else is going to take the money that is due the players and distribute it as he sees fit because the players do not work for Ed Garvey. Ed Garvey is a paid employee himself. He is nothing more than a hired hand. The money that I pay, that the San Diego Chargers pay to their players will be paid directly from the Chargers to the players. And the negotiations will continue as they have, continu have, they have been going on since the start of the NFL. Lenny? Phil, could you please ask Gene Klein how the owners will guarantee the money? That's the key issue. Will the owners guarantee it, and how will they guarantee the $1.6 billion? Well, number one, the players' contracts are a great part of the $1.6 billion. The other monies that we have talked about will be in pension funds. We talked about giving them approximately $2 million in cash per club. The minute an agreement is signed, that's cash paid. I think all negotiations will be the concern of the committee and they will negotiate whatever we think is, is fair and hopefully come to a, a satisfactory conclusion. Like but the owners will guarantee it, right, Gene? Isn't that the I bottom have line? Not, I do not have the authority to say that whatsoever. I cannot speak for all the owners. The committee speaks for the owners. Okay, thank you, Gene Klein and Phil Stone in San Diego. Coming up on NFL 82, we have some great pennant races going on. How about that National League West? We'll get to all of that when we come back on this special edition. No company on earth has sparked more engines than Champion. And now Champion introduces Copper Plus, an innovative new series of spark plugs that can improve the performance of just about any imported or domestic car. New Champion Copper Plus spark plugs, the easiest and simplest way to improve performance, no matter what kind of car you drive, because nothing sparks like a champion. What makes Hertz number one for everyone? They don't cramp into dinky little vans. They'll guarantee the cost of their rentals in advance, in writing. He likes things in writing. They're everywhere. With the amount of time I spend at airports, I just don't have the patience for anyone else. By doing more things for more people, Hertz is number one for everyone. Hertz is number one for everyone. Yellow's my favorite color. What state cut its taxes more than any other state? California. Wrong. What state cut the maximum personal income tax rate by a third? That's so right. Yeah. Wrong. What state cut six billion dollars in business and personal taxes the last four years? North Carolina. Wrong. In what state is all this tax cutting history being made? New York. Right. The biggest state tax cuts of any state were made in New York. How come you guys didn't know that? Well, today here on NBC, we will have a Canadian Football League doubleheader for you. And throughout that doubleheader, we'll be bringing you updates. The big plays from the key baseball games around the country. And we do have four pennant races still alive. Let's check them out. In the American League East, Baltimore beat Milwaukee last night 7-2. to two, So the Brewer lead is now down to three games. In the American League West, California won. Kansas City lost. So the Angels lead is now up to three and a half games. National League East, it may be all over there. The cardinal magic number is just three. They beat the Cubs yesterday. The Phillies lost to the Mets. 
in the West. That is our race. Look at that. Three teams within two, uh, two games uh, of, of all each other. San Francisco will play at Los Angeles again today, and they will be playing each other as they go down the stretch. All three teams going head-to-head. -head. One game out the Braves, two games out the Giants. Now, we have three baseball cities right now occupying four first places. So we have three reports. Southern California baseball fans are starting to get excited over the possibility of a freeway World Series. The defending world champion Dodgers came from 11 and a half back at the end of July to overtake the Braves. Dodger stopper has been Fernando Valenzuela, able to avoid the sophomore jinx. The resurgence of Bert Hooten, who came back from knee surgery. Jerry Royce and Bob Welsh have given the Dodgers the pitching. And Pedro Guerrero has to be considered an MVP candidate. Down the road in Anaheim, the Angels set a new attendance record on Wednesday. That made Reggie Jackson a happy man since he makes 50 cents a ticket now. He also tried to make off with Frank White's hat during the Angels' three-game sweep of the Royals. Along with Reggie, the acquisition of third baseman Doug DeSensei has been a big plus. Also, picking up Tommy John from the Yanks gave the Angels some needed help on the mound. Luis Sanchez has become the stopper out of the bullpen of late. If Angel pitching holds up, they should have their first Western Division crown since 1979. This is Bob Dolan in Milwaukee, where the American League East is now a two-team race between the Brewers and the Baltimore Orioles. Five weeks ago, there wasn't a race at all. But then the Orioles began to fly, at one point winning 17 of 18. They have put the pressure on, but still they have not caught the Brewers. It's just a situation where every game's a, a must-win type thing, and like I said, uh, I think maybe even Baltimore has given us a a little bit of a lift because they're making us mentally tougher. Uh, they're not giving anything to us, and we're having to go out and win it, and that's what we're trying to do. Milwaukee and Baltimore still play each other five more times this year, including a four-game series next weekend in Baltimore. This is Art Holiday in St. Louis. The Cardinals made their move to the top of the National League East on the strength of their pitching staff. On September 14th, the Cardinals were one half game behind the Phillies. The Redbirds proceeded to win eight straight, moving on top by five and a half games. In that eight game winning streak, the St. Louis pitching staff allowed only seven runs. The keys to the St. Louis success story are great defense, aggressive base running, and superb relief pitching by Bruce Souter. You know, we wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for Bruce. And, uh, you know, I'm a pitcher myself, and to what he has done in his career and what he's doing now and the stability that he has inside of him, he's some kind of man, baby. The Cardinals' chief opponent is the Phillies, led by 20-game winner Steve Carlton. Carlton did his part to keep the Phillies in the race by beating the Cardinals twice in the past two weeks. Carlton did it with his arm and his bat. But unless the Phillies get hot and the Cardinals stumble, the Birds should fly right into the National League playoffs. And Carlton can beat the Cards, but he's lost to the Mets. He lost yesterday. Three times this year, he's lost to New York. But coming up next here on NFL 82, the story of a city without a team. But boy, how they miss the games in Vegas. We'll have that next on NFL 82, right after these words from your local station. Knight Rider, the two-hour movie spectacular, crashes into your living room. I don't believe this. Don't miss Knight Rider, the movie, tonight at 8, 7, Central and Mountain. Chocolate sauce, soaked in. Motor oil, seeped in. Collar soil, ground in. Unless you clean the dirts that go all the way through, your whole wash isn't clean. That's why we invented Era. Era has the power of cleaners for deep-down dirt, for soaked-in grease, for seeped-in oil, for grounding collar soil. Penetrating cleaners concentrated into one powerful quarter cup. Think collar soil is tough to clean? Watch Era clean through two tough stains plus the collar soil. Put a teaspoon of Era only on the top, rub, run under water, and look. Era cleaned all the way through, even through the collar soil. That's the kind of clean you want for all your wash. Era cleans all the way through. Can I squeeze in? <laughs> sure. Of course, you may never squeeze back out. Well, then we'll stay in here forever. There's only ten minutes worth of air. Grouch. Togetherness is good for a marriage. Can I get my secret? Honey, <laughs> if we're so into togetherness, why do we have two antiperspirants? Because I need my secret solid. Wait a minute. Use my spray. It's strong and will save space. Nope. Secret solid keeps me drier. Drier than mine? Mm-hmm. Better for close living? Oh, then I'll use yours. Stan, secrets for women. Goes on silky, dry, and smell. Mmm, pretty. Mm-hmm. Helps keep me dry, and I don't smell like one of the guys. But if it's strong... Stan, it's 
really getting crowded in here. Secret, strong enough for a man. But made for a woman. Watch News Center 2 tonight at 6. Well, what about all the money that's bet on professional football, particularly in Las Vegas, which thrives on action, football or no football? Gary Gerald has this report for us. Well, the effect of the NFL player strike is being felt in many areas, but certainly one area where the impact is most dramatic, the betting windows at the many sports books in the Las Vegas casinos. Here, where the odds would normally be posted for Sunday's games, simply the cryptic message, on strike. Now, Jay Garland is the manager of the sports book here at Caesars Palace. And, Jay, I'm wondering, can you put into dollar figures the impact on the gambling casinos of Nevada? Gary, within the legal bet shops in the state of Nevada, there's probably in excess of $30 million a week per weekend bet on uh, football total. All this, I would uh, guess that probably around 70% of that is bet on the professional games. Now, how do you try to fill that void while this strike exists? Uh, we will definitely fill it with, uh, try to fill it with the uh, Canadian Football League and what other events we can uh, offer to the betting public. Do you feel that the betting public will come close to making up the difference of that 70% of some $30 million? No, I can't see that happening at all, Gary. The, the public side is well informed on Canadian football. The one thing you can't get any odds on today is just how long this player strike will last. Thank you, Gary. And Pete Axtelm, are your friends here in the States betting on the Canadian games? Well, I'll be interested to watch it. I've already checked with Captain Cry, my favorite uh, man in the business, because he's always complaining about how much he loses. He says this won't hurt bookmakers as much as the baseball strike did, because baseball strike occurred when there was nothing else except soccer or something like that. Right. Here, people can bet on baseball through, through the World Series. What he's worried about more, really, is what he calls telephone gridlock, because, uh, you know, usually you give out the, uh, the teams and their odds with nicknames. The Redskins minus three, the Cowboys plus four. Well, no, nobody's even learned most of the nicknames in the CFL yet. I just learned that they have two teams named Rough Riders. That's right. They played each other the other night. They could be people all over Canada calling up and saying, no, I meant to bet on those Rough <laughs> Riders. You know, this, uh, I'm, I'm adopting my new identity for Canadian football of Pierre the Canuck, right. and I'm opening up with the Argonauts minus two and a half, the Stampeders plus six and a half, and if I lose, I'm paying off in Canadian dollars. Argonauts minus two and a half? And Argonauts are giving two and a half, yeah. and the Stampeders are getting six and a half. Argonauts and Stampeders, and the Rough Riders won and lost that game the other night. All right. <laughs> there are a lot of rich people on both sides of the strike, and then there are people who are just people who are caught in the middle. David Diaz has put together this report for us. In this locker room, they are all free agents. And instead of 55% of gross, they play for the 16% commission on what they sell. They are the vendors who work the stands. And a Jets game provides a day's work for 250 of them. Most of them college students who've come to depend on the $100 to $120 one game can bring in. In fact, if there's anywhere in this country where people were really looking forward to the football season, it had to be here in New York City at Shea Stadium. With the Mets doing so poorly, the crowds here have been so small, they've been described as exclusive crowds. And the vendors, in particular, are looking forward to the 50 to 55,000 people that would pack this place for a Jet football game. There goes my spending money for uh, the winter, from now to the uh, winter, because money I made during the summer for baseball goes directly for school books, tuition and stuff, and car insurance and payments like that. It really hurts because it puts a dent in a lot of, you know, a lot of your finances and things you had planned because you expected to work the whole season. Even so, there is some sympathy for the player's position, but only about, some. I sorry for, all athletes, I don't feel sorry for I'm sorry. They make so much money. They get limousines that are the, the ball games there. They, they get trophy driven. They get um, a special uh, everything. You know, it's ridiculous. Across the river at Giant Stadium, the day workers can't even count on the last few days of the baseball season. But the money that won't be made if the strike continues won't be the only thing that's missed. I'll miss the money, but I guess I'll miss the game more. David Diaz for NFL 82. Is that, is that an Argonaut or a Stampeder? No matter what your point of view, before they pulled the plug, 1982 had already provided some entertaining moments. Week number two was the week of the halfback option pass. Everyone was doing it. Marcus Allen, the rookie Raider, threw a terrific looking pass to Cliff Branch in the Raider romp of Atlanta. Then Chuck Muncie tried one for San Diego. And he completed it for a touchdown. 
All right, so on a roll, Mike Gooman of the Rams said this looks easy, but his pass got intercepted by the Lions. So it was up to Earl Campbell to decide if this stuff was successful on the day. Where was he throwing it? Four running back option passes, two complete, two intercepted. Not great, but entertaining. But it was the kicking game that provided the real fireworks last Sunday. What a collection of stuff. San Diego tried to punt. Kansas City blocked it. It took them a while, but they finally recovered it for a touchdown. Then Tampa Bay tried to punt. Washington blocked that one. Curtis Jordan did the blocking and the eventual recovery. But it wasn't just punts. Pittsburgh blocked Jim Breach's winning field goal try for Cincinnati. And what about the offensive side of the kicking game? Not all the punts got blocked. Some got turned into first downs. Just ask the Colts. Seattle faked the field goal try. And that one worked too. When it rains, it pours. That was the problem in Florida. Of the four extra points attempted by Washington and Tampa Bay, three of them failed. But they were entertaining. But the most exciting kicking play of the day was turned in by the Colts. Who else? They botched up their three and got six instead. That's Baltimore for you. But the most confused people last Sunday played for Seattle and Houston. They came out for the second half kickoff and lined up reversed. They had to do a quick fire drill to get things straight. So some teams have some things to work on here during the strike. And on the campuses of America, they're saying, who needs pro football anyway? We'll have collegiate football highlights coming up. Let's hear it for Northwestern. They finally broke that losing streak. We'll be right back. Hey, I can't see. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry. I'm worried. I can see that. My insurance agent says annuities. My broker says stocks. It's confusing. Talk to my IDS representative. IDS? IDS offers lots of ways to make your money work harder. Really? They start with your goals. Oh. And a financial plan that puts you in control. IDS, I see. Great. So can I. Thank you. IDS. Ideas to help you manage money. Next time I'll get front row seats. Right now, the one thing you want most is an opportunity. Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. Allstate Update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies. But the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an Allstate agent for life, home, and auto. Put yourself in good hands. There's one German car that's born to challenge the most challenging roads. That's at home on the tightest turns and the steepest grades. That gives you remarkable performance, razor-sharp handling, and a rarely equal feel for the road. But it's not the German car you are thinking of. It's the Volkswagen Jetta. And it's only $79.90. Surprised? You will be when you drive one. Knight Rider, the two-hour movie spectacular, crashes into your living room. I don't believe this. Don't miss Knight Rider, the movie, tonight at 8, 7, Central and Mountain. Great day in college football yesterday. The last second wins by Penn State and Stanford. And what about Northwestern? Mike Adam Lee's alma mater finally did it, <laughs> Michael. Way to go. Hail the purple, hail the white. After 10 years in mothballs, the Wildcats have finally given me a reason to wear this thing. After 34 <laughs> consecutive losses, they broke that string with a 31-6 win over the Huskies of Northern Illinois. This man, Ricky Edwards, four touchdowns on the day, and the folks in Evanston went wild. But the people in Columbus were crying. John Elway with 34 seconds to go on a broken play finds Emil Harry all alone in the end zone. Stanford upsets the Buckeyes 23 to 20. 
And in University Park, Pennsylvania, another upset. Number two, Nebraska upset by Penn State. Blackledge throws a th thir his second touchdown pass of the day, and the Nittany Lions win 27 to 24. And I would like to say uh, personal congratulations to head coach Dennis Green and athletic director Doug Single because it's been a long time for those guys in Evanston. I'd like to tell everybody, too, the four touchdowns by Ricky Edwards tied the all-time Northwestern record that was set and held by Otto Graham and Mike Adamley. You thought I was a fraud. <laughs> no, good ex-player. Thanks, Michael. And uh, uh, yesterday at college football as well, legendary Grambling coach Eddie Robinson was going after career win number 300, and he got it as Grambling beat Florida A&M 43 to 21. And yesterday, the World Driving Championship was decided. You saw it right here on NBC Sports. The Caesars Palace Grand Prix, that is K.K. Rosberg of Finland. He came in fifth in the race, but enough points to win the World Driving Championship. Salutes the crowd. He has done it. First time Rosberg has ever won. First time someone from Finland has won the World Driving Championship. What is a rouge? What about those other Canadian Football League rules? We'll get into that. Canadian football action coming your way in a few minutes. We'll get into some rules when we continue on NFL 82. An old spice man always gets a warm welcome wherever he lands. Old Spice is the clean, fresh, masculine scent so many women love. So even if you love only one woman, you'll love Old Spice. The men scent so many women love. Once you put motor oil in a can, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't watch it work. So how do you know how good it is? At Quaker State, we put it in writing. We back up our quality with a lifetime guarantee. How do you know how good Quaker State is? We guarantee every new car engine against all related failure for as long as you own your car. We put it in writing. We're working to keep your car staying on the road. How do you know how good Quaker State is? We put it in writing. No one else does. Off the white belly jet that lands me to a hotel that understands me. I've got business and I'm on the road again. Feeling the pressure mounting on me, counting the people, counting on me. Competition like I can't remember when. And you can reach me at the Hilton. Just call me at the Hilton and we'll get down to your business right away. When American business hits the road, American business stops at Hilton, America's business address. If you want a typewriter that erases, you can get the correcting Selectric or the Xerox memory writer. If you want one that erases and sets columns automatically, you can get their Model 50 or the Xerox memory writer. If you want one that also has a memory for paragraphs, you can get their Model 60 or the Xerox memory writer. But if you want one that erases two lines automatically and has about 30% more memory for under $1,360, you can only get the Xerox 610 memory writer. Night Rider, the two-hour movie spectacular, crashes into your living room. I don't believe this. Don't miss Night Rider, the movie, tonight at 8, 7, Central and Mountain. A Canadian Football League doubleheader coming your way in about 15 minutes. What about some of those rules you've heard about? The Rouge. Hi, this is Ed Kilgore. Due to Canadian Football League restrictions, WGR-TV is blacked out of Canadian football. We hope instead you'll enjoy Yankee Red Sox baseball right here on TV2. If this were a National Football League field, I'd be standing at the back of the end zone, 10 yards from the goal line. But this is a Canadian football field, and it's another 15 yards to the back of the end zone. That's 25 yards deep. With all this extra room in the end zone, obviously, Bill, there's got to be some advantages for the offense. Yes, they have. They got a lot more room to maneuver around. We are in, up in Canada here. We have over 10,000 square yards of playing area, which I think all receivers like yourself must have enjoyed. I'm certain of it. I know we have just over 6,000 square yards of playing field in the United States. Up here, you've got a lot more room. Now, when you get out on the field, there are 12 men on offense, 12 men on defense. 
Now, on offense, in Canadian football, it's a whole different story. The backs can move no matter what before the snap. Is that correct? That is correct. The interior linemen, they have to be stationary one second before the ball is snapped. Even though they're not in the stance, they must be sta stationary. Now, your ends can be moving laterally on the line if they have not gone into a three- or four-point stance. Your backfielders can move at will laterally, backwards, or forward as long as they do not hit their line of scrimmage at the time the ball is snapped. Bill, the difference between a legal catch in the National Football League and the Canadian Football League differs. You might explain both. Well, that first catch there, both feet landed in bounds, which is necessity of the National Football League. But the other catch, only one foot landed in bounds. Both of those catches would be good here in Canada. Bill, in the National Football League, when you punt into the end zone or a missed field goal goes in the end zone, the play's over. But in Canada, that can cost you a point. Sure can. Once that ball is kicked into the end zone, you have really one of two choices. You either run it out to try and save a point, or else you concede it. And if you're tackled in there, then it's still a point. For our first-time American viewers to Canadian football, have you got one suggestion while they watch today? Well, I don't know about a suggestion. I sincerely hope they enjoy it, but uh, one little twist for them, they'll see that once the ball is snapped, it'll stay live until declared dead by a referee's whistle. All right, you got all that down, Ax? Well, I'm trying to keep track, but I also have my man in Toronto on the case, Max McGowan. In the course of his research last night, he was closing a saloon. He was talking <laughs> to the guy who was cleaning up, and the guy was a little bitter. He says, you Americans, he says, you only come, up to come to us when you have a problem. He says, you had a gas crisis, you came up here to get gas. You wanted to dodge the draft, you came up here to do that. Now you got a football shortage, you got to head north again. You know, I think he's right. Coming up next, we'll have some more of the Canadian Football League players coming your way on today's doubleheader. We'll be right back on the special one-hour edition of NFL 82. The news from the Bell system? Any business with 40 telephones to 25,000 can start with a Dimension PBX and build an integrated information system. New add-on functions let you combine voice and data. Manage energy. Centralize message handling. Distribute communications benefits. And carry over much of what you have when there's a new generation of Bell business systems to install. Talk to your Bell account executive about it. The knowledge business. When the biggest newspaper in Oklahoma bought 40 Volkswagen diesel pickups, we weren't surprised. It has a tough double wall bed, it's the best mileage pickup in America, and no matter what the weather, these pickups crisscross Oklahoma hauling up to half a ton of newspapers every day. So if you ask the folks at the Daily Oklahoman about Volkswagen, they'll probably say what we've been telling you for 25 years. Volkswagen delivers. This little handful keeps me running, and that keeps me thirsty. So I reach for one thing. New improved Nest Tea iced tea mix. <laughs> Nest Tea's as natural as all outdoors. It's no ordinary mix. Just look at that rich color. Taste as clear as sunshine, too. Because now Nest Tea slow brews its tea. Then has just the right blend of lemon and sugar. Oh. New slow brewed Nest Tea iced tea mix. There's nothing like it under the sun. Well, obviously, the strike played havoc with the travel plans of our NBC announcers, directors, and producers. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen should be in San Diego for the second game of the doubleheader. Instead, they're in Edmonton, second half of a CFL doubleheader. Dick, how's the weather up there? And welcome to professional football's northernmost outpost, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Commonwealth Stadium. Temperature in the low 40s. It's gray, and there's even some thoughts of snow before the day's out. We'll have 60,000 fans crammed into this magnificent Commonwealth Stadium constructed for the 78th British Commonwealth Games. As you can see in the backdrop, uh, fall is hit and winter is close behind here in northern Canada. It's the Edmonton Eskimos, a team that has dominated professional football in Canada the last four years against the Calgary Stampeders. My partner Merlin Olsen has been studying the loves and laments of the Rouge Point all week. And for those in a rule book and learning a couple of new rosters. But, Dick, i got to tell you, I've never seen a more beautiful stadium or a be more beautiful playing surface anywhere. Quality team, the Eskimos, four in a row. You don't win four without great players and great coaching from Hugh Campbell. Also a very enthusiastic crowd. 
The Calgary Stampeders beat them in the first game. They did, and they, the Eskimos are off to a 5-5 start. If they want to get back into that Grey Cup uh, race, they've got to win today, and they've got to continue to win. We're going to see many outstanding stars in today's game. One of those you all witnessed on NBC in the Rose Bowl a few years ago. That'll be Michigan's last time out. The player of the game, chosen by the Citizen Saving Hall board, Warren Moon, the quarterback of Washington who scored two touchdowns in the first half and led his team into a 27-7 lead, only to see them threat. Now he drops back to the two-yard line. That's the Washington team. First time they've been in the Rose Bowl since 63, and they came in here smoking, and they did it. They upset a two-touchdown favored Michigan team that had lost only one game. As a college quarterback, your dream might be to lead your team to a victory in the Rose Bowl. And if you're lucky enough to play Canadian football, you certainly would be dreaming about being able to go with your team to the uh, Grey Cup and win. Well, five years ago, Warren Moon led the Washington Huskies to a victory in the Rose Bowl over Michigan, was selected the most valuable player, and for the last four seasons, he's led the Edmonton Eskimos to victories in the Grey Cup. It's got to be a great feeling to have achieved that kind of success. If I have had a lot of and especially early in my career, something that I really didn't expect to come that fast, but I've been fortunate, and I've played with a great group of guys both in college and professionally, and things have worked out pretty well for me. I've always felt that when I've looked at that big field that you play on, at the extra length and the extra width, that that would be a great adjustment to make. Was it difficult for you as a quarterback to adjust to that large field? The big field really didn't bother me at all at first because my style coming out of college was mainly sprint out, so it really helped me out a lot as far as having more room to run outside and giving my receivers a lot more room to throw the ball. Because I was able to do that, I really loved the, the wider field and the wider end zones and the longer end zones. It just gives you more of an opportunity to throw the ball down close to the goal line. And all those things are an advantage to a quarterback, and that's one reason why this league is so pass orientated. Having grown up in Los Angeles, being around professional football, and certainly uh, going through school in a, at a school, Washington, that puts out a lot of professional football players, have you ever thought about playing in the NFL, playing quarterback for an NFL team? Yeah, I've thought about it year after year since I've been here, and um, because of one thing or another, I've decided to stay here, and, and it's basically because I'm happy with the situation I'm under. Uh, Coach Campbell presented me an opportunity to play professional football at an early time in my career, and that's one reason why I decided to come here, because I didn't want to sit with an NFL team and maybe uh, hold a clipboard for three or four years before I got my opportunity to play, where here, coming off a high like a Rose Bowl, then continuing into the professional game and playing right away was something that appealed to me a little bit more. And since I've gotten here, things have gone well, so I've decided to stay. I really like it. You have to be excited that uh, you're going to have some games going back to the United States. Uh, that uh, the Edmonton Eskimos and Warren Moon are going to be seen all over the country. Does that give you a good feeling? I have family spread out throughout the United States, and a lot of them aren't able to see me because they can't get cable for one reason or another. And because this game is being on the national network down there, they're going to get a chance to see me play and get a chance to see what Canadian football is all about. And I'm sure they're all excited about it. They've been calling me all week, wanting to know when the game is going to be on and everything. So I'm looking forward to having a pretty good game and not letting them down. Well, if your family is as big as mine, it's better to let them watch you on TV than to buy tickets for all of them. Yeah, it is a little cheaper to keep, <laughs> keep them at home than fly them all in. <laughs> Thank you very much, Warren. Thanks a lot, Merlin. Warren Moon, one of the stars we'll be seeing today in the uniform of the Eskimos of Edmonton as they meet the Calgary Stampeders. It's cool, 40 degrees. Could be some snow coming, Len. <laughs> okay, Dick. We're looking forward to your broadcast coming up. It's the second part of our doubleheader. The first game will be British Columbia at Toronto, then it will be Calgary at Edmonton. So let's get you ready for that. Hi, this is Ed Kilgore. Due to Canadian Football League restrictions, WGR-TV is blacked out of Canadian football. We hope instead you'll enjoy Yankee Red Sox baseball right here on TV2. The Edmonton Eskimos are the Pittsburgh Steelers of the CFL. Both have been perennial champions. So the CFL and the NFL are not really as far apart as you might think. The histories of the NFL and the CFL are intertwined, starting with the coaches. Bud Grant of the Minnesota Vikings, Marv Levy of the Kansas City Chiefs, and now Frank Cush of the Baltimore Colts all began their pro coaching careers in Canada. 
The most familiar team to Americans is one of the least successful, the Montreal Alouettes, which is now the Concord. That's the team that lured Vince Ferragamo from the Rams, Tom Cousineau from college, Billy White Shoes Johnson from the Oilers, James Scott from the Bears. Last year's Alouettes had them all. They also finished three and 13. Just because you are great in America doesn't mean you are great in Canada. Of the players who have made it big in Canada, the most familiar names to Americans are the quarterbacks, like Tom Clements, the Notre Dame quarterback. He was an All-American with the Irish, went to Canada for five years, gave the NFL a brief stab in 1980, and headed north again last year. With the Hamilton Tiger Cats last season, he passed for over 4,500 yards. That led the Eastern Division. Conridge Holloway is the quarterback for the Toronto Argonauts. You remember him at the University of Tennessee. He had been a 12th round selection of the New England Patriots. He is now in his eighth Canadian Football League season. Remember Warren Moon, the MVP of the 1978 Rose Bowl when Washington shocked Michigan? The former Husky quarterback now calls signals for the Edmonton Eskimos. All they've done since Moon has been there is win four consecutive championships. He was the leading passer in the league last season. But the most valuable player in the Canadian Football League was Dieter Brock, the quarterback for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. In fact, he's won it two years in a row. The former Jacksonville State quarterback is in his ninth season. Last year, he moved the Winnipeg offense a total of nearly three miles in 16 games. That's a league record. And a quick word about a kicker. Remember Zena and Andrew Zishin, the UCLA kicker in the late 60s? He has spent the last dozen years kicking in Canada. Last year, he led the league in punting. He was third in the division in scoring. Of the 34 players on a Canadian roster, only 15 can be American, but they certainly make an impact. Seven of the nine middle linebackers are from American colleges, as well as all nine of the starting quarterbacks. Well, that's coming your way shortly. We'll be back throughout the day. We'll be tracking the negotiations, which we hope began a half an hour ago here in New York. We'll have all the pennant race highlights coming your way throughout the afternoon here on NBC. The doubleheader you will be seeing up first, British Columbia. Hi, this is Ed Kilgore. Due to Canadian Football League restrictions, WGR-TV is blacked out of Canadian football. We hope instead you'll enjoy Yankee Red Sox baseball right here on TV2. Right after these words from your local station. Do you understand what I'm saying so far? <laughs> you like how many calories are in that? Let me save you from the ravages of obesity, heart disease, and loving snarf. <laughs> hey, kid. <laughs> From Hollywood, the all-new TV censored bloopers, number three. Hosted by Dick Clark, with guest stars Tony Randall and Lynn Redgrave. With special appearances by Dr. Joyce Brothers, Chad Everett, Rose Marie, and featuring the unplanned censored clubs and bloopers of... Corey Amsterdam, Eve Arden, B. Arthur, Conrad Payne, Bill Bixby, Todd Bridges, Carol Burnett, Archie Campbell, Dick Cavett, Gary Coleman, Tim Conway, Betty Davis, Doris Day, Richard Deacon, Eric Estrada, Mean Joe Green, Mariette Hartley, Arthur Hill, Graham Kerr, Kalina Kiff, Ted Knight, Harvey Corman, Vicki Lawrence, Ed McMahon, Leslie Nielsen, Itzhak Perelman, Charlotte Ray, Don Rickles, Mr. Rogers, Richard Simmons, Gordy Tapp, Daniel J. Travanti, Dick Van Dyke, Bruce Weitz, Cindy Williams, and many more of your favorite stars. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the host of TV Sensor Bloopers, Dick 
Welcome once again to another all-new edition of TV Censored Bloopers. And before we get started, I gotta tell you, your response to Bloopers 1 and 2 has been terrific. I'm very happy to say that the bloopers just keep on coming in. Stars find them hidden away in their garages. Producers literally stop me on the street and say, hey, I got one for you there, by golly. And they're coming in from all over the world. The amazing thing is that these were things that were supposed to be destroyed. But luckily, for some wonderful unknown reason, they were all preserved for us to share here tonight. It's a perfect example coming up. A mild-mannered man and a persistent pachyderm. Our biggest guest is Judy, a very special elephant. The smallest of our guests will be a tiny South American cat. There goes my ladder. Uh, a cat in need of a name. Also with me tonight is Granada's original animal expert, Desmond Morris, who'll be talking about the early days of Granada and that very popular uh, animal program, Zoo Time. That was the music from it, Peter and the Wolf, at the beginning of the program. Hello, there goes my notes. The program tonight is something of a triple celebration, a quadruple celebration, because we're celebrating our 25th birthday. That is a scene I bet the elephant would like to forget, not to mention the poor guy. A lot of people tell me that the animal bloopers are their favorite. Well, hang in there. We've got a lot more coming on. I, you know, as a matter of fact, I guess everybody has their favorites, and to keep track of them, we've given the bloopers special